Okay, we're at a small section, angular momentum of a rotating rigid object. Um, so let's look at the PowerPoint. And we can see that the, um, from the previous discussion, um, uh, Li, you know, we have a solid disk here. For if we look, just take a small portion of it, Li is equal to uh, uh, Mi Vi times Ri. Um, MVR. <coughs> well, what is VI? VI is equal to R omega. The omega is the same uh, for all parts, but as you vary the radius, uh, your tangential velocity will vary. So VI is equal to R omega, uh, which leads to M R uh, M I R I squared omega. So the sum of um, or LZ equals the the sum of all the little LIs. Uh, the sum of uh, m i r i squared omega. Uh, the sum now we put the sum. If we look at the sum of uh, the, the omega is the same for all the all particles. Uh, <coughs> there aren't some parts that are traveling faster than others. Here they're all um, traveling together because it's a, a rigid rotating object. So the only thing that can be summed is the i parts. Uh, there is no i uh, omega i. So the sum of m i r i squared, well, that uh, times omega, that in parentheses, that is the, uh, the how you calculate the uh, um, moment of inertia of an object. So the... Um, well, in this direction, it's equal to um, I omega. Well, if we, <coughs> if we take uh, DDT of LZ, that's equal to I D omega DT equals I alpha. And we see that the sum of the torques, um, the sum of the external torques is equal to I alpha. Uh, so L is equal to um, I omega. Now, a solid sphere and a hollow sphere have the same, um, the same mass and radius. They are rotating with the same angular speed. Which one has the higher angular momentum? Well, let's go back. Um, uh, oh, I just gave it away. Um, the uh, uh, the hollow sphere, because it has a higher uh, angular uh, a moment of inertia, the hollow sphere it has a higher angular momentum. <clears throat> okay, and that's for the next section.